Puck, and it is game day three here in Sopron, Hungary for the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament. Canada taking on Japan. This is the group of death because in this group, on game day three, the last day of the tournament, we do not even have one team that has booked their ticket to Paris 2024 yet. So those are the games today. Canada taking on Japan now, and coming up later, Spain taking on Hungary. Shona Thorburn alongside Mark Clark. What a tournament we have had. Look at that. One win and one loss for every team in this group. How important is this day? And the only way you can really control your destiny for all four teams is to get a win, and then you're gonna have to wait and see what happens in that second game anyway. Well, that's it. Take care of your own business, win the game, you get your ticket. If you lose, you're gonna be sitting there cheering on one or other of the teams, because that would mean you had the chance to qualify. It's just been an amazing tournament so far, and if it carries on and builds after a tremendous performance by Hungary on game day two, to beat this Japanese team, it's in shot now that we all felt looked so, so good in beating Spain. But with 2,500 fans cheering them on, they, they really did raise the level Hungary to beat Japan. Obviously, that's later on for Hungary to try and finish the job off. But this Japanese team don't become a bad team overnight. They don't become a different team. And they're just still the most fun, most up-tempo, most exciting team to watch. And that's the team that's going to be on the floor today. They've got to get a lot of field goal attempts up. They've got to check, spread the floor. And if they can do that, they have a really great chance to stab the ticket for themselves. Because if they do anything less than that, the size of the best rebounding team in the competition in Canada could become a huge factor. And they already know how good Natalie and John were is because she was superb in the last Olympic qualifying tournament. And now Kayla Alexander is just having a tournament to die for. It's just been an unbelievable tournament, rebounds of points. And she is the, she is the reason Canada have, have achieved what they've achieved so far in this competition. They've been tremendous. Here's Canada coming out right now. Well, you mentioned it, Japan. We've seen two different teams, really. That great win on game day one over Spain and then falling game day two to Hungary. Which team will show up? I agree with you. I think if Japan can get up 43 point attempts shooting a good clip, they have a good chance of getting over Canada. Canada, on the other hand, they got one of the top scorers and one of the top rebounders, like you mentioned, in this tournament, Kayla Alexander. Neither team had a lot of time to prepare, but they both all had the same amount of time. We'll take a quick break for the playings of the national anthems.
coaches trying to get to their first Olympics are exchanging gifts. And let's not forget, we have the third team on the floor this afternoon. That is Julio Anaya in the middle from Panama, Martin Horizon from Bulgaria is on the right, along with Sarah al from Egypt on the left. They will be calling today's action. And I feel like the teams have a little bit of pressure, but so do the referees. Wow, yeah. There's a lot at stake in this game. As we're going to take a look at starting lineups, I don't think we'll see too much of a difference. Uh, than seeing the way that these teams have started in the first two games. Well, fair. Japan almost get massive contributions off the bench anyway, so it's very much a 9-10 player rotation every day of the week. But uh, in terms of the starting lineup, it's uh, the same starting lineup at the start of every game. It's, it's they get consistency. Yamamoto's had a marvelous tournament, 15 points in both games. Can they rebound well enough? If they don't rebound well enough, Canada, regardless of how well or bad Canada are playing, they'll stay in the game. If they can keep Canada off the glass, then that really, with two things, gives them a chance to run, but really does limit Canada's scoring opportunity. Leads the team and leads the tournament in the to Japan. They're fun to watch. Yeah, they really are. Coach Onsuko, he definitely, Onsuko, excuse me, he definitely knows how to get his players going. And they do a lot of rebounding drills. There you see the starting lineup for Canada. Shea Colley, Bridget Carlson, Natalie Acharwa, Kayla Alexander, and Naira Fields. That's the same starting lineup we've seen all tournament. He does, Coach Victor Le Pen. Question it, Japan going up against Hungary. What are Hungary going to do defensively? And they, like you said, they took Japan out of what they want to do, and that's rebound, run, shoot early, shoot often, penetrate and kick. And they did a great job defensively. So you imagine maybe Canada will look at that, figure out how Hungary beat Japan, how they slowed Japan down. They had 40 three-point attempts, shot 38% in the first game. And then they shot only 28 attempts in the game that they lost to Hungary, shooting in the 20 percentage uh, mark. They got, they have to get their shots up. That's how they play. Yeah, absolutely, is how they play. Four field goal attempts from Canada can really hurt them. You know, they've got to increase their own. I know they're going to go to the glass. That's the way they've scored a lot of points. But poor field goal attempts when they don't have rebound coverage could be the worst thing for, uh, for Canada. The team sub countdown to tip off is a little late, should we say. <laughs> it's almost the 10 second TSO countdown to tip off because we're ready to go right now. I'm excited about today. I'd love to see Canada control the glass because if they do, they're in the game. Well, a lot on the line for both teams. We know if they win, they are moving on. If they don't, they're going to be watching that second game very, very closely. Welcome to the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament here in Hungary. Canada taking on Japan as Canada win the jump ball. The winner of this game will be celebrating with a ticket to Paris 2024. Carlton has it inside, she has the mismatch. Nice look by her is no good as Japan now 
running like they normally do. Oh, goodness me. Beats almost five defenders to get to the basket is Miyazaki. You, you talked about Yamamoto. Miyazaki has had oh, excellent two games as well. That's a great combination in the backcourt. What, what are Canada doing trying to go for steals in that scenario? If you're going to go to steal, you either get it off foul. If you don't, that's going to happen to him. Get back. Keep the ball in front of you and make this Japanese team get into the half court. Make them make four or five passes. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't afford to do what they just did. Well, a turnover by Canada. They have been prone to turnovers, but they're going to get it right back, so a good job there. And Japan, no surprise, a little bit of full court defense. I think they're going to put pressure on 40 minutes today. They get it to Carlton. Carlton turns the corner. She wanted Alexander to roll. Alexander with a big mismatch. They find her. And close to a three-second call. Uh, a three-second call, a five-second call, close <laughs> to everything. But, uh, but it's Bridget Carlton. She's not going to be rushed, is she? No. She really had composure right then. Takada, one of the veterans, handing it off. No, I believe it was Kali yeah, is called for the holding on yeah. uh, Takada. You can yeah. see it right there, look. You know, and it's <laughs> either go, go over it or try and get under it. Don't try and run through it in that scenario. Try and take the space away. Yamamoto turns the corner, keeps Fields on her back, and no wow. help. Couldn't get back around because of that little side dribble. Good job there by Yamamoto. And again, full court pressure. Alexander. Carlton comes off. Attacks the basket, no good. She had a shot. Good take by Carlton, I think. Now Japan, Yamamoto. Wants to cut it to roll. She does, finally. Not a great post-up team, even their post players. And that shot is well short. Fight for the rebound. So much better by Canada because they, they just kept Japan in front of them. That's They've just got to do that. They don't have to look for too many things apart from making them go over them. Holly. She stops, pops, back rim, but who's there for the offensive rebound? It's Kayla Alexander, finds a Chalma. Chalma goes off the dribble, strong take. Can't convert, but she will earn herself two trips to the free throw line. I mean, this is going to sound a little unfair in the way I'm going to word it, I think, but they can throw up shots. As long as they try and throw up good shots, Canada, because they are so good at going to the glass. So big, so active. It's not just about being big. Alexandra and Achoma are active. So they've got a really good opportunity to get a second and third shot. Japan have just got to find a way. They did it against Spain. You know, Spain's a very good uh, rebounding team. Very active as well. Very good at athletically. Japan did it then, they've just got to get physical, and that's, I think they got to be saying that on game day three, after the way they played the game on game day one, Japan. They were so physical in that, on that day. As a charm one knocks down her two free throws. You mentioned it, Canada, they are the number one rebounding team in this tournament. Oh! Said it, you got to stay between them and the basket pit. But they haven't taken a three yet, Japan. They've, got, they've, they've literally had unopposed layups on every score. Alexander, no good. Japan with the rebound, they're pushing the tempo. This is where they're dangerous. Kaho, Miyazaki, Miyazaki lines it up, no good. So their first three-point attempt comes more than three minutes into the game. Canada, 14 and a half offensive rebounds per game, oh, and that's a big part of their game. Yeah. Fields gets it to a Chamwa. Chamwa takes the contact, nice finish. That's good for Canada. That's very hungry like in terms of trying to get deep in the clock, get someone with a good percentage shot. No one better than that, Leah Chamwa. Yamamoto gets it back. Penetrates baseline, and just no help side. As the Japanese fans are enjoying what they're seeing early here. I mean, 
We can see Coach LePan's reaction from, from we are, and he is not happy about the on-ball defense at all. Well, Naira, I was going to say, Naira Fields is going to get called for an offensive foul. We saw it from our position, and we were a little bit behind the play. And, it, you know, that, to me, was unnecessary. She had her beat, that, and she hit her in the face. So, easy call there by the referee. So, ball back to Japan. Two-point lead for them as, hey, guess what? Japan going to substitutions. Yamamoto to Takada. We've seen that play before in this tournament. No good. Canada now. As Hill has checked into the game for Kali. Tomwa gets it, tries to get to the field. She does. And maybe just a little bit too relaxed on that pass, but Alexander was able to get it up. Exactly what you said. The, the pass was better, Alexander would have just put it up. Yeah. Yamamoto finds Takada. Oh, oh nice. Hey, Shoulder, if uh, you'd have said that uh, apart from one or two three-point three attempts, Japan were going to come out and get to the ring at will, with the ring protection Canada have, I'd have I'm, sh I'm shocked. I'm shocked at the way Canada have decided to defensively play this game. You said you saw Coach Victor Le Pena a little upset when his team is on defense, so maybe that's not really what he's no. asking them to do. Uh, Sammy Hill's shot is blocked, but it will stay Canada ball. 12 seconds on the shot clock. I, I'm pleased Hill's got in the game. I mean, I thought Collie was a better option in the backcourt in terms of advancing. She was solid with it. Hill's just got to be solid with the basketball. Carlton, no good. Nice little tip by Yoshida. It's another thing Japan's pretty good at because yeah. they are a lot shorter. They they try and tip it. And Pellington, who's just checked in for the game, is going to be called for a foul. So they're almost switching on ball screens, even in transition, it would appear. But they go underneath. Yeah. You know, it's like, look how deep that uh, Louis has the, has the position. If you get that deep, you're going to have the foul coming over the top. Maybe go over the top of that and make him try and throw the lob. But it's. Uh, Japan are going to be happy with its start because they literally have got to the ring at will. Well, Canada calls the timeout. Let's listen in here as he changes things up defensively. We are very... Patrick, go, Patrick, go, go, go. We are very ecstatic. Ecstatic in defense. In offense, sorry. All of us here. We want to beat Canada. Play four, but play complete and then pass it. Okay? Play motion, but play complete and then pick and roll. Wow. I low. Okay? Let's go to my side then. Yeah, but this Kayla and Natalie are all the time here. We don't have a space. Okay. Uh, some highlights at the end of that timeout as you heard Coach Le Pena and what he wants to do and what he wants to see his players do, I should say. It's, uh, yeah, it's the last play that you saw there. It's interesting because uh, Alexander had to stay because the pick and pop action, she had to defend that. It's like they're defending people without the ball. Someone's laying it up and they're, 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 either they've got to do a better job or they've got to decide they're going to have to rotate more from maybe the, yeah. you know, on the help side. They can't do what they're doing at the moment, that's for sure. Hawaii. Has it, steps back, finds Mawuli. Mawuli, turnaround shot, no good. Alexander there for the rebound. He's gonna finish this tournament with a double-double, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a Tom Water Carlton. She gets it over to Pellington. Pellington now finds Hill. They look inside to Alexander. Don't, well, they do get it to her finally. And she's gonna turn around, and that's gonna be an AM one for her. So good execution, good job there by Canada. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's tough, you know, because they're gonna be reaching, they're gonna be trying to deny, but Hill just worked so hard to protect the basketball. Wasn't the cleanest pass to Alexandra, no, yeah. but she did well enough to hold her space. So you know, it doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to flow. They just took care of the basketball and got a high percentage shot. 
Japan have to find a way to... Hungary exploited it on game day two. That high post entry is releasing any pressure that uh, Japan are getting on the ball. It's like they've got to do a better job in that area. Of the, and the, like they did on game day one. Gamble from the weak side, try to get in front of the post, because if it goes in there, it's a foul or two. Emmy here checks into the game. She had some great yeah. minutes against Spain. I thought coming in off the bench for Canada as Mawuli just goes right at Alexander. No good. And now Canada with an opportunity to run. They do. Pellington just goes right at the Japan defense and earns herself a trip to the free throw line. You know what, Shona, it, it might be... It may be a little bit not the normal thing to say, but they're almost happy for Japan to try and take it to the ring, as opposed to allowing them to spin the basketball, stretch the floor, yeah. try and play us on the dribble, try and get to the ring, and then force, but as long as they can test the shot like they did last time, it's okay. It's the wide open layups they've been giving up. Well, who's there to clean up the offensive glass? It's Kayla Alexander, and that leads to a three-point shot by Naira Field. So Canada taking their first lead of the game. With three and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter, the winner will be celebrating. The loser is going to have to wait. Yoshida. And no good offensive rebound by Maluli. Hawaii. And a foul is going to be called. Yeah, I go as far as saying that yeah, if, if this game, if, if Japan get into a half court game like that, the Canada get, can get them into and have got them into on a number of occasions in this first, first quarter, Canada have a real shot at the win here. If the game is at this tempo, I'll take them to a win at this yeah. tempo because they're yep. their rebounding numbers are going to be good enough to get them more, more attempts than uh, Japan. Canada not shooting the ball well in their first two games compared to the other teams. Oh, how about that? Splitting the defense, taking it all the way is Miyazaki. And Japan have tied it. I think this is going to be a 40-minute game. Hey, it's in Sopron, <laughs> and it's the group of death. <laughs> Maybe a 45-minute game at this rate. True. Fields has it. She receives the screen. She goes baseline, finds Sammy Hill in the corner. Her shot's no good, and that's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. So much better from Japan there in terms of Mauli's defense on the high post, forcing that pass not becoming an option because the defense has to collapse on it. Uh, both teams have the answers. Uh, it's just which team is going to be is going to be able to execute that fully for forty, and that's when that bench strength of Japan could really become a factor. These two teams know each other pretty oh. well. You know, they played a couple of cycle ago to qualify for the Olympics. They have lots of exhibition games with each other over the years. Well, and Canada have never lost to Japan in an Olympic qualifier. So. Oh. How about that speed and movement and pass? Just a great read as Hayashi is the recipient of a great pass and a foul is going to be called. Great job by Kali again. And, and that's how she's looked in this game. She's not trying to blow past, she's just going to get it down the floor and not give Japan opportunities to create off their defense. She was just solid. You know, it's again, not pretty. Doesn't have to be if you want the win. Well, Carlton's back into the game. Still hasn't found her shot yet. Achamwa goes right at Mawuli, and you're not going to stop that. That's she ha she That's knew it. what she was doing as soon as she caught that ball. That's a super move. That's a quality elite player move. Miyazaki with the roll, uh, with a little floater, excuse me. As is Again, that. more breakdowns, yep. especially on the on ball. Amy here, shot fake, goes up, and it's going to be an M1. Opportunity of the three point play. So long in the arms that when she does that ball fake and goes up, she's carrying on. She draws so much contact. Great finish. Just got to make the free throw. 
And that's a three-point play for Abby here. It's ironic, isn't it? Because Canada have more three-point plays than Japan, some of them the old-fashioned way. Miyazaki. And a nice little first half. Oh! And I'm not sure, at least from my angle, and I think the Japanese fans agree with me, Mawuli was stopped on that attempt. Let's see. Uh, yes. It's just <laughs> those long arms. How is this not cool? Well, it's going to stay hate, Japan yeah, ball, though. Hate criticizing and officials, but. That time the foul was called. So I'm, you know, we could maybe say a makeup call. I, I didn't see the foul. We're going to try and see if we have a replay. But I do think that uh, Emmy here got away with a foul oh. on Mawuli on that last possession. But you know what? It doesn't matter because you, you're going to the free throw line anyway. It's just now Bridget Carlton has picked up the foul. And then but, but what the effect on that is that Bridget Carlton is so important to Canada. Her picking up a foul is not what Canada want. Yeah. I don't know if it's a makeup or not. Referees never say they make makeup calls, and I, don't, and I believe them. But by missing the first one, if Carlton fouls out, they're going to look back and they go, why? You know, just make the call that you see. A little full court pressure by Japan. Canada handles that easily. And now they get it to Kali. Kali goes right down the lane. No good. Achamwa, offensive rebound, takes her time, puts it back. How good is that with Achamwa? And she's coming off paternity leave. Yeah. Didn't play last summer. She did play in November, November at the free Olympic qualifying tournament. As Mawuli just takes it right at Annie here. And again, no help side coming for Canada. We've seen Japan almost score at will when they do get into the paint. Emmy here now. So that's going to go against Mawuli. And that'll be her second personal foul and puts Emmy here on the basket. So good job there. Just a nice sweep. Yeah. She never, she never got herself square on the drive lane, so I, the referee's up, is, I think, right on the call. And Amy here again, because she's long and she's been really uncomplicated in what she's tried to do. Took it right out of the defense. Been impactful off the bench. She's really needed to be that for the whole game when she comes in. That three, the three player rotation there for Canada is their biggest strength in this game. Harry here with uh, Achomwa and uh, Alexander. That's that's where the victory for this game is going to be based. If Canada do get the win. And you see number 18, Sakura Noguchi checking in for Japan. Hasn't who played. has not played yeah. yet. You see Akaho and Takada, their other bigs on the bench. So I guess Coach knows this is going to be a 40-minute game, and I want to make sure. It's only 22, Noguchi. Has had a really nice season though in the in the league in Japan, right with the uh, ice and wings. Really has done a nice job and really contributes across the stat line. Well, she checks in, and that is a tough shot. Nice defense by Achamwa. Canada will have one last shot attempt. Six seconds. Carlton has to be aware. I think she is. Uh, not sure she tried to draw a foul, but no opportunity. And, well, we couldn't get much closer, Mark. <laughs> After 10 minutes, it is tied here. 20 apiece. Well, stat-wise, the, you know, the crazy thing is 0 for 2. Not the 0 for the 2 three-point attempt.
punch them in the big mix. So, and why wouldn't they? Because they're going up against the smaller opponents. So they're, they're taking their time and finishing plays. And that's, it's easy to say, take your time against the smaller opponent, but it's hard for the big. Sometimes the, 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 the contact you get is at a different level. So it's much harder to be balanced. Well, that was the Courtside 1891 app. Go ahead and download it. Watch all the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament, as well as basketball all over the world. It is second quarter action underway. They get it inside, nice backdoor. Kawhi is not stopped. A great execution Absolutely. out of the quarter time. That's a super read. Super. Collie tried to get, deny the pass. She was dead for the minute she was in the passing lane. The back cut was so, so well executed. Kali. And turnover almost. No, nope, Polly had a layup. And it's gonna be a shot clock violation. Doesn't matter, Japan comes up with it. Mawuli to Mawuli, little sister, sister. Hey, I like Maluri and Maluri look the <laughs> best combination they can go with on the inside because they're just that little bit more athletic yeah. than Takada and Akaho. It looked a little bit more difficult for Canada to get the ball where they wanted to get it. And a foul, I think, is going to go against Yoshida, number 12. Like the, yeah, like the double team, though. Yep. Trying to force Canada to do something else, and you can see a little bit of tempo increase. It's interesting, though. You know, you see, yeah, Yoshida just yeah, but, went down on her arm. Yeah. Uh, he's keeping number 30, Evelyn Mawuli, in the game because she does have those two fouls already. Colley has it, she wants a screen, shot clock is winding down, she's gonna have to make something work. Oh, nice catch, nice hands by Kayla Alexander. Real, good, really good execution, passing traffic, it was a tough pass to make. Mawuli right at Atomwa, and draws the foul, so she'll go to the free throw line. Take. Oh, yeah. That was a good take. And, you know, the times that Canada have been aggressive, they've drawn fouls on the other end. Natalie Achoma, just as you can see in the bottom shot, said, well, um, yeah, I probably did, but can I have the same? Can I have that same little contact foul call that I've, I've got just because I'm like, a little stronger, I can play through it, give me some help? that first can uh, quarter, Canada shooting the ball a little bit better than we have seen them yep. shoot the ball in this tournament. Uh, Japan jumped out to a four-point lead in the first minute and a half here. It was tied. Well, Edgen's in the game early this time for, uh, for Canada. She's just got to go to work on the glass as well. It's got to become a factor. And Fields with a lot of dribbling with pressure. They find Carlton, and they're going to call the foul on the catch by Moto Hashi. So Japan going to their benches. Both yeah. teams going to their benches more than we have seen in the previous two games. And it is the third game in four days for both these teams. Alexander uh, she catches it that low. No way she's not going to score. Leading score, leading rebounder in this tournament, doing everything she needs to do for Canada. Yoshida to Mawuli. Mawuli. Mahomi even touched the net. <laughs> I really like that, that, that combination. Is they, 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 I'm not surprised Coach stays with it. Carlton. Finally, she says. As she knocks down that shot from the corner. So only a third made three-pointer in three games. And this is a woman who scored 41 oh. points in FIBA EuroLeague last month. January, I believe it was. Yeah. A record. Mawuli going up against Fields. She does. And it's going to be an offensive foul going against her. So that's going to be her second personal foul. Third team foul for Japan. Oh, yeah. 
hook, right? And the referee was right on the baseline. That's what he sees. Well, well yeah, he turned the palm of the hand. Yeah, as soon as the palm of the hand faces the defender, the referee's going to call it that way. I wasn't sure until that. Yeah, it's nothing wrong throwing your arm through, but as soon as you put the palm of the hand towards the defense, it's got to be a hook. Well, Akaho checks back in. As Fields having to bring the ball up against lots of pressure, gets it to Edgem. She gets it back though. They go inside, trying to find Carlton. She comes up, she just knocked down a three, the last possession for them. And that's a good so it's Five points in a row for Bridget Carlton now. It's a little bit smoother, didn't it, last that last, but that two off the dribble. A little bit of extra time, looked a little bit more confident after making the three. And Miyazaki has not been stopped every time she penetrates to the basket. Well, that time she didn't score, but she is going to earn herself a trip to the free throw line. She has eight points already for Japan. Yeah. Once, once, she, once she turns the corner, it's a tough ask for the referee not to uh, protect her as she goes to the basket. Her free throw is good. Wow, this tournament, what an, ad, what an advert for this, uh, this, this structure for the tournament. <laughs> you know, four, 14 tournament, everyone going at it, tight games. It is game day three, and we don't even have one team who's already yeah. booked their ticket. Every, everywhere else, Brazil, after game day two, you knew at least one team going. China, you knew one team going. Swartz, no good, but Alexander there to clean up the rebound which she so consistently does. Swartz can't get the second one to go. Mawuli takes her time. And wow. that gets her teammates excited as she looks to the bench and cheers along with them. Fields goes inside to Alexander. That double team comes, and that's going to be a rebounding foul going against Canada. And that's, that's a good yeah, cool, look. Sorry. I just feel like they could have got it in earlier to Alexander. Well, there was a moment that Fields had passed it when she was originally open. There was no one. And in the end, the double team was get, had time to actually create that situation for the defense. Japan are going back to that early double team at the inside they did it against spain they'll offer the three-point shot from the perimeter to take away that uh, inside option miyazaki akaho not known as a big outside shooter but she can take people off off the dribble and that's exactly what she did and you see the excitement from the japanese players coach victor lapena wants Uh, Sean, in that by the time that was on the graphic with the uh, field goal percentages uh, was flashed up and Japan have done a great job at just literally limiting second chance opportunities for for Canada and then they've got to the lane, got to the hoop 68 percent from the floor that Japanese the Japanese team is shooting and now Maluri Maluri is trying to knock down the three it's all that balanced offense that we saw earlier in this competition. Looks like it's beginning to flow. 
And at the other end, they're just doing a better job on the glass. The double team is becoming a factor that Canada are having to read, and now they're up the floor. Well, full court pressure, and it is going to go to Japan. So good job out of timeout, coming up with a quick stop. And that's not what you want to see if you are the coaches on the Canada bench, especially after a timeout. Yamamoto back to Miyazaki, who has had a great first half as she finds Evelyn Bawudi. Until she starts missing. Yeah, until she starts. She's not missing. Keep giving her the ball. Great recognition, great decision. Basketball IQ at its highest. Wow, Good. how about that on-ball defense wow. by Miyazaki? They go inside to Achoma. No good, but she follows her shot and makes the rebound, come back count. What a great job by Hill, though. She put, she, she looked Ooh. after it and then threw it inside where she needed to. Akaho has it up top. She drives to the basket. And, you know, every time the guards by Japan are denied, they just go set an on-ball screen for the big which, you know, it's hard to defend as Fields just takes it all the way. A little bit of a hero step almost in that layup. And Japan now want to call a timeout. As he still has two timeouts left. Japan are up seven, four minutes and 21 seconds. We'll take a listen into their timeout. some replays after as they're coming out of the timeout. I think Japan are going to like that phase of play. Even though Coach wanted the timeout, took the timeout. The whole tempo of the game got a little bit quicker. They've opened out the seven-point lead. They're forcing Canada now to make plays off the dribble. And that's good for Japan. I think that suits the way they want to play the game more. Maybe the coach, maybe coach just wanted to take the timeout to get, a, get some time into... Yeah. The players on the floor, he needs Manoe to stay in the game. She's been phenomenal in this second quarter. Playing some big minutes and has points, had those yeah. two fouls yeah. for a while now. And she goes against Emmy here. And that foul is going to be called on the dribble. So ball will stay. Japanese ball. For oh, Evelyn Maloui. Emmy here gets out, tries to contest it. I'm going to put it on the floor then if you're going to play me that way. It's, uh, it's a great read, good execution. She's having a quarter. It's, uh, it's fundamental off. Rare turnover by Japan on the out-of-bounds. Kali, no good. Canada there with the offensive rebound, though. Mm -hmm. Akaho bringing the ball up for, for Japan as a chum. I don't... I don't think she really needed to reach, to be honest. I think she had pretty good possession. Left totally exposed, though, wasn't she, by yeah. the rest of the team? It was, like, still in transition. And uh, Yahoo saw there was no help, so I'm going. And uh, Choma picks up a second foul, which is not a number that Canada need to see. As you see, her check out. And Alexander come in, and that's going to put Akaho on the free throw line because Canada now have committed over five team fouls.
Shields. A lot of dribbling. Emmy here goes inside to Alexander. Alexander, every time she touches the ball that low, she's not rushed. Keeps the ball high. Yoshida gets it to the hot hand. Mawuli, Mawuli. Oh, that ball is swatted, but it ends up in the hands of Yoshida. Yamamoto now. Gonna have to get something going. She does, she lets it fly. Front rim, Carlton with the rebound. Wow, how about wow. that block? Every time Canada needed something in this whole tournament, Alexander's been there for them at both ends of the floor. And a turnover. Yamamoto pulls it out though, doesn't have numbers. Akaho left wide open. Let's that one fly, no good. Amma here did such a good job in transition getting back though. Really prevented the easy two. Great, great effort getting back. And they get it to Emmy here. She had that box block on Mawuli that time. And Mawuli, she can't bounce. She already has two. And Emmy here just takes it right at her. As it's now a one possession game. The lead for Japan. Mawuli, what a first half she has had for Japan. Hayashi, oh, make that two blocks by Abby here. In Canada, opportunity to tie. And unfortunately, they won't. And ball back to Japan. As Fields says, my bad. Absolutely her bad. <laughs> I mean, like, she drew two defenders. And Collie was wide, wide open, same side, absolutely yeah. Absolutely wide open. And you compare that, I know they ended up with a missed three. But Yamamoto didn't like the numbers when she went on the break. This is, this is why she doesn't like the numbers, is because now Canada are getting help to get to contest the layup. So she poured it out and they still get a good shot. Canada turned it over and they had real momentum then. They could have scored in transition, one point game, tight game. Now at Japan, have another opportunity. You've got to be relentless in your execution at this level. Oh, wow. Another layup as Miyazaki has not been denied every time she gets to the paint. As you saw, uh, Evelyn Mawuli goes to the bench. Takada in for the first time in quite a, a while. Time. Yeah, yeah. Emmy here trying to find Pellington. She does. Pellington now. A little shake and bake action. She's going to put the shot up. No good. Almost comes up with a rebound, but no. And now Miyazaki, some great performances in the first half by Japan. Ball reversal, Yamamoto stops, pops in and goes in! Uh, Japan looking to shoot the three a little bit more in this yeah. quarter compared to the first quarter. Well, you can track this little run right back to that turnover. Great drive. Jay Colley is going to earn herself a trip to the free throw line. I think it was good position, but she was inside the, the charge circle, yeah. right? And, and she, I think on the way through, she got hit me. Like, gets a little hand late on the step in. Yeah. So good job by Kali. Cutting into this lead by Japan. Japan are gonna call a timeout, no surprise. One probably wants to use this second timeout of the half. Takada's only played 60, just under seven minutes in the whole half. She 
she's the veteran veteran oh. of this Japanese team. She's the player that's the consistent one they rotate around most of the time. Well, Kali with an opportunity for a three-point play. That's good. As she gets her third point of the game. Miyazaki bringing it up. She's had a wonderful first half. 12 points already. Japan taking their time here. Takada setting the on-ball screen. She rolls. Miyazaki is left wide open. No good. Alexander with the ball. They go quick. They could have an opportunity for two quick shots. Carlton drives. And a late foul is called. So she'll go to the free throw line. And they'll also get the ball back. It's another one of those plays where we're both sitting there going, oh, there's no foul. Oh, oh there is a foul. Uh, yeah. oh. It's the time of when they call it that's the interesting. Yeah, uh, it was almost uh, on the way down the foul might have been. Yeah. More obvious, more on the way up before the shot. The last minute's been really important for Canada. They had the chance to go double digits down until uh, the Collie three-point play. And they've sort of stopped yep. that bleed and really importantly going into the half. 47-43, Canada haven't shot this well at all across this tour, they've done a much better job today. Japan, though, just they can't stop and get into the ring. As Carlton makes her free throws, they make it a one possession game. They get a stop here, they'll have an opportunity for another shot. They could tie it going into half. Yeah, yeah. And with the way that Japan has played in the second quarter, you'd have to feel pretty good about that if you're Canada. Absolutely. Yamamoto, obviously they're going to use the clock. Yamamoto is left open. Oh! <laughs> when they score, that ball doesn't hit anything. <laughs> they got to go. Seven seconds. Hill drives baseline. And good job drawing a foul. So she's going to go to the free throw line for two shots. Who cleared out who on this play? the hand contact on the back. Takada moved her feet pretty well, in yeah. my opinion. And she's going to check out of the game for the last 2.9 seconds, as that is her third team foul. Uh, sorry, third personal foul. And Hill makes the first of two. I didn't see 50, 46 come at all. <laughs> um, but you've got to say both teams have shot great percentages. We thought it was going to be Canada's offensive rebounding that was going to be the factor. Yeah, they're about rebounding Japan, but Japan have hardly had any opportunity to go the offensive glass because they just shot so well. You know, Miyazaki with 12, you know, we lose at the half. That's the uh, Yamamoto's. More, apart from Yamamoto's threes, it's all been about going to the ring. But Alexander and Achomwe, there's no surprise where the points are coming for Canada. That inside strength has been absolutely vital. And uh, this is the surprise for me that they got so many unopposed looks at the ring. And then we saw those, there was that like little two minute spell where Alexander and Amir here just started to come across from the, uh, from the weak side and started blocking shots. We haven't seen that since, but that's going to be something to be aware of as the game develops. But uh, I love the way that Canada have approached this what, because they've been very strong at dealing with the pressure. It's not pretty, but once they've got it inside like this, they've been effective. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, you mentioned it. Some good shooting by both teams, and that has to be a relief if you're a Canada fan because they're only trailing by two. There is a lot on the line, and we have 20 more minutes of basketball, but it is halftime. Canada trailing Japan just by four, 46 to 50, for that all-important guaranteed ticket to next summer's Paris Olympics. We will be right back. Education, health, justice. We sometimes take these simple things for granted. They're not common for all of us. We are all born on the same planet, but not with the same opportunities. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are one. We are all on the same team. Let's convince those who never thought they would do it that they can. We can. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No matter your origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good.
Well on top, look at this pass from Adam Ron. Make the easy play. Great behind the back. No doubt that will be a highlight. Top 10 play. Michelle Goody. Johannes all behind the back. But now you can see finish it up. Wow. You saw a nice little smile on her face. The players point to each other, acknowledging recognizing that she made that extra pass, Johanna. We get it to Plum. She gets free. She puts it up. And oh! Are they going to count it? Has she made it? They're going to review it. They will go and review this. If they have won on that play, that will be a stunner from Brianna Stewart. Halftime here in Hungary as we see some Miyazaki highlights. 12 points, five of five, 12 points, and not one of those is a three, if I'm correct. <laughs> she just keeps getting all the way to the basket. And Japan with a slight four point lead over Canada. So we do know that the winner of this game obviously books their ticket to Paris. And then the winner of the next game, which is Japan taking on the home team Hungary, uh, sorry, Spain taking on the home team Hungary, the winner books their ticket to Paris. But we're gonna have to wait and find out who that third team is. Uh, whoever, it will be the head to head between the two losers and we won't know that obviously, as you say, until the, uh to that game. The great thing about the old Miyazaki highlights you saw there, five from seven from the floor. Everything a two-point shot at the ring, apart from that little floater. No surprise that Tyler Alexander is the top scorer for Canada. You know, 11 points, five from eight from the floor. I mean, she's just having a tournament that, uh, when she looks back on her career, she'll remember this because she has been the standout player, prob probably of the whole tournament in terms of numbers, leading points, leading rebounder, just exceptional. I mean, we were talking about it before the game, you know, who would you pick for tournament MVP? Canada wins, no hesitation, oh, my MVP would be Kayla Alexander. Well, if Canada, this tournament. Even if Canada just qualified, they qualify, you've got to say she's... Yeah. She's the reason, yeah. one of the big, big reasons. Absolutely. Yep. I agree, obviously Canada, they are playing without Kia Nurse, who uh, injured herself in preparations for this tournament. Um, it's nothing serious, so Canada fans, don't worry. It's nothing serious. It was just something that she couldn't immediately play on, and they didn't want to take a risk. Well, the other thing, you know, like, this is only a very small window in the season for everybody, so you can't risk people yes. in this yep. sort of scenario. You know, if it's your last Olympic Games, maybe, but... Uh, not at this stage of her career or in the, in the this stage of a season. I mean, look at that again. This percentage is is, is crazy for uh, for Japan. Eight from eight from the from the free throw line, 65 percent. And don't forget, 65 percent includes the two blocks. So you take away the two blocks, and the uh, percentage is even further uh, to impress you. They've just been phenomenal in the way they've broken down the defense. And you've got to believe, and this will be interesting because Coach Japan have made some changes in both games at the half. Whether or not, as we see in Miyazaki numbers, whether or not that maybe Canada help a little bit more. Maybe they try and force Japan to start to shoot the three or the mid-range two more consistently than getting to the ring. He's consistently made adjustments throughout games. Demonstrates how good a coach he really is. Canada, 77% from the free throw line. They're going to get fouled a lot. 
They're shooting 58% and 33%, which for them is phenomenal on this tournament because this tournament, the one thing they've struggled with is their ability to make first shots wherever they're shooting them from because Alexander's numbers are made up of those offensive rebounds and putbacks. So, a four-point game at a half, 50, 46. Now, we get, we're going to have a half of basketball here. And the great thing, maybe the fans were needing to warm up a little bit, but literally this gym, 2,500 people, has probably got 2,000 people in it at the start of this game. Yep. That's how much this tournament has captured the imagination of the local basketball fans, of which obviously in this part of the world there are a lot. Hungarian fans also know if Canada wins, it gives them a much better chance. Oh, yeah. well, if Canada wins, oh, yeah. Canada, Canada wins, win, they're, they're... Hungary has qualified. Exactly. You know, that's... Uh, regardless of the outcome, because they would, even if yep. they lose, they would have their yep. head to head. So everybody here is going to be cheering on the, uh, the, the team in white and hoping they get the win, because this is a knowledgeable fan base. They're going to know the deal. So they'll be here trying to get Coach LePena on that uh, ticket to uh, Paris. We're just looking at the uh, bench there. So, so Japan, uh, you know, not Typically what teams do at halftime, the players leave. I'm not sure where they go because they only leave the court for roughly, what, 30 seconds, a minute at the most. Use the and then, room, that's yeah, it. the coaching staff stays on the bench and they review video. Obviously video, the video, the you know, scouting coordinator cuts the video during, during the game for them. And then there you saw them, but now we're the counter bench. So they come back out and they start shooting very, very early, and then they go in a little bit earlier. And obviously that's when coach, you know, uses visuals as well and shows them a little bit of video and probably what he wants to see them do better and also what they are doing well. So a little bit different compared to what a lot of other teams do. Yeah. Well, it just shows you that the, the resource you have to put in at this level now. You know, it's not just about the guy standing on the sideline there, it's about his whole staff doing whatever their, their role is, and there is someone in a dark room, probably, cutting tape as it comes out live and then sending it in the right in the right format, in the right package to, to make it easy for that the staff on the court to actually use it effectively over half time. Sometimes there's always a question, though, isn't there, about information overkill, overload and all that type of scenario, but if he's got a big point to make, nothing helps more than a visual. So... Uh, Interesting to see which changes either coach makes, but I'm sure Coach Lepen is going to do something about that defense because he was they were too exposed to penetration. Well, 50 points for Japan, that's a lot at halftime. And what's even more surprising to me is that only four of those four shots are from four makes are from the three-point line. And they already have 50 points. There's that courtside 1891 app. Don't hesitate to download it as you can follow. There's still a few more games left to be played today. One more here in Hungary, a couple games in Belgium, and then two games in Brazil for those last spots to the Women's Olympic Tournament next summer in Paris. underway here in Hungary. It's the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament. The winner of this game will be celebrating with a ticket to Paris 2024. Canada with the ball, looking to go inside to Carlton. Alexander, high-low, nice high-low action. No good. Oh, gets her own rebound twice. Oh, she just can't finish. That has to be frustrating, but they force a turnover. Achanwa, no good, gets her rebound. And another Missed opportunity. Oh, goodness me. Is this a rebounding fest? <laughs> Let's ignore the rebound numbers for the rest of the half, though, because they've just had six in one possession. <laughs> one trip down the floor. Well, it took a lot of effort, but they got two points out of it. Now Japan. Miyazaki with that great first half. Almost turns it over. It doesn't. Shot fake. Side dribble, no good. And Canada with a good defensive possession as they get it up to Fields. And Fields just beats the Japanese defense as we see uh, 
Evelyn Mawuli, 30, getting the start in this third quarter for Japan. She normally comes off the bench. Yamamoto. That shot off the front of the iron. Carlton tips it to herself. Now gets it up to Fields. Nice backdoor pass, and that time Carlton doesn't miss. Well, Canada now with their first lead in a while, actually. That's the ninth lead change in this game. Mawuli shot front rim. So Japan a little bit stagnant here to start the second half. Canada, if that was their best option. Yamamoto. It's almost like the, the wrong way around. It's that's the sort of thing you'd have expected to see Canada do. S create advantage there and move the ball, change the angle inside. But what Canada did was just take a tough one. And the coach of has taken out fields, and I think he's probably letting them know that they've scored heavily in this uh, in this uh, second half in the third quarter. Bike throwing it inside, the back cut getting to the ring, and she takes a tough one. Doesn't need it. Doesn't need it at all. No, no one touched that possession. Miyazaki, she's a very good defender on fields. Wasn't really necessary, and that's going to be a boxing out foul going against Canada, I believe, against Shea Colley. Yep. So it will stay Japan ball. Japan cold to start this yeah. uh, second half, to say the least. Can't get the scoreboard ticking over at all at the moment. Miyazaki, baseline penetration, finds Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Oh. They're just so quick. It's difficult to defend. Two penetrations that deep into the key. Kali now. Gets it to a Chanwa, Chanwa. Carlton. Shot is short, but she draws the foul. Did a great job getting uh, mm -hmm. actually on the wrong side of it. Like she had to come over the top, had to come over the shoulder. Even, even if there was only minimal contact, it's looking like a foul. See, she's on the wrong side and has to come around hits her on the elbow on the way up good call by the official and Carlton is flat out a good free throw shooter uh, and well, as always that's the commentator jinx thank you mark clark so everyone his name is mark clark she is uh she is <laughs> no, statistically she is. a great free throw shooter she is a very very good free throw shooter good shooter in general she knocks down the second as canada retakes the lead Hungarian fans want Canada to win. The gym is almost packed already. Oh, yeah. Yamamoto goes out of Chawa. It's a tough left-hand layup. Carlton might have got away with a boxing out foul on that last possession. Fields now. Gets it to Chawa, shot fake. Finds Carlton, extra pass to Fields. Fields three-point shot, front rim. But who's almost comes up with it is Alexander. Mawuli oh, runs the floor. And I think it was a foul, but I understand why the fans are screaming because I thought it was called too late. I don't see Actually, it. now I don't, yeah. A chumble got out of the way. The contact was her getting out of the way, not really a foul. She went underneath her, but like, fair enough, there was no little space to do it. But yeah, she just passed to Maluri. She read the defense. Maluri should have just made the play. Let's be honest about it. She should have made the layup. But it's just reading the floor. And Maluri's cut to the hoop. Tremendous execution. Just got to finish the play. And that's not a great foul as a chumble picks up. Foul number three with still six minutes to go in the third. And that's why she was trying to get out of the way. She knew that she doesn't need to pull the foul.
If it stays like this, Shona, the pressure in this game is due. We thought it was pressurized two, two days ago with Hungary coming back. This, because the Hungary fans know what it means for a Canada win. So there's going to be a lot of emotion and tension in this gym. Yep. <laughs> and 500 fans will also be waiting around for the next game after this. Hungary and Spain, they obviously want Canada to win this game. Sammy Hill. Penetration, nice strong move by her. As Canada regains the lead. Mawuli left open on the flare. I do love them when they just push and shoot the ball early in rhythm. I think they're such a good team in that, that part of the game. They should stay with it. They were so good day, game day one. Back yourself. Carlton gets it. Stop, pops. And another good look for Canada. Yoshida inside to Takada. She can't convert, but she draws the foul. And we'll go to the free throw line. So, again, same phase of the game, right? Coming straight out of transition, and they don't pull it out. They're just going through, going out. That time, Takata cut to the ring really well. Should have, again, should we will be disappointed she didn't finish the play, and um, we should be shooting one, not the two. Well, we had eight lead changes at the half. We're already at 11. And Canada now already in the penalty. Yeah, they've already picked up their fourth. There's half of the quarter to go. And you know yeah. Japan are a tough ass to keep in front of you. So interesting to see what Coach Japana goes to. I wouldn't I wouldn't be adverse to him just showing a little zone just to see if he can match up on the shooters in it. Just to take away that that try to guard your guy. Yeah. And it's uh, what he's got to do at the moment though is get back in transition and get Japan back into a little mid-prop and late-prop situations. Well, Takada's out after those free throws, and Evelyn Mawuli with that big first half, 12 points for them, as Canada gets the ball in to Fields. Carlton. Maybe exaggerated that one a little bit, but that's what veteran players do. Does the referee make the call if she makes the shot? Just a question. I'm just suggesting. Because yeah. it was that late. She got, I would say she was fouled. Absolutely, I've got no issue with it. There was enough contact for her to call it, but... Well, either way, another trip to the free throw line. Canada in the most in this tournament to the free throw line out of the other three teams. And Carlton misses the first of two. Two rare misses in this uh, this quarter for Bridget Carlton from the free throw line. But makes the second one count, so it is tied again. As nice hands. Unfortunately, the ball just ends up in the other sister's hands. I it was intended for Stephanie Mawuli. I think she wants the assist, though. <laughs> Fields. Gives it to Sammy Hill. She was left open. That shot's no good. And Hiroshita kicks it up to Yamamoto. Yamamoto! <laughs> with a big time three for Japan, and Coach LaPena wants to talk about it after that five point run for Japan. They are up five, 63 to 58. There's four minutes left in the third quarter. Listen in for you guys. Here. Okay, 
uh, while we get the replays at the end of the timeout. Canada have got away from either the high post entry or thrown it into the low block. I don't really see a lot of difference with, uh, with the way Japan are playing their defense. I do see a little bit more of Myra Fields putting the ball on the floor without creating any advantage, and that's what Japan wants. You know, if the ball doesn't move and they don't get an advantage there, then they really are missing out on where Canada have been so, so effective. Amma here has been back in the game since the Choma picks up her third foul, has not touched the ball on, off, on the offensive end. She's, been, she's a handful. Got to, give, got to give them touches of the ball. Yeah, you don't have touches. So, right, if there's nothing, move the ball to someone else. See yeah, what that yeah. other person, what advantage someone else is going to create for you. Especially when your bigs are so, like, a Choma so smart, they're not going to force it. They'll throw it back out. Amma here gives it up to Carlton. Carlton. Finds a Chomwa. Chomwa goes inside. There's good ball movement and nice patience by Canada as Amy here is going to go to the free throw line. No support. It's Carlton seeing the Chomwa, seeing the change of angle to go big to big. Just heads up. Four people touched the ball in yeah. that possession for Canada and yeah. they got something really, really good out of it. Yep. I think Amir here did a really nice job. Uh, I've got advantage on this angle. I know they're going to move the ball now because Natalie's going to catch it. John will catch it straight inside. By the time the triple team comes, she's going to get fouled. It's like the time and the place. There's, the, there's a right time and a right place to put it on the floor. And at the moment, this isn't the game where Canada need to be putting on the floor too much. So much quality on the inside. Well, that was a quick shot. Uncharacteristic, actually, shot by Miyazaki. And Achama running the floor, finds the shooter. Carlton takes her time, shot bag, holds the hand, and sees that three-point shot go in. So a great job after the timeout by Canada. Japan want to talk about it. And they have to talk about it because they've lost that tip over the head ahead of the timeout. And my Japanese is in great with this here. Let's have a listen to the uh, tempo of the timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. game in my opinion oh, that she has had she's been super today yeah. and she's been taking the same just making shots you would normally expect it to make now she's making them today and fields is going to be called for a foul trying to get around mawuli so she's going to go to the free throw line because canada have committed over five team fouls I think uh, Mawuli really did a good job of sold it, really. yes, selling that. That's just a normal fight to me, you know. There's been a lot worse than that in this game that they've let go. Maybe because she went to the floor, he felt like he had to call it. Shouldn't really be a factor in deciding it, but... Well, Japan, they go up. 
up two. A little full court pressure after the free throw. Canada breaks it easily. Carlton, who's had the hot hand in the second half for Canada. Oh, nice. Annie here takes her time and unfortunately can't convert, but Fields there for the offensive rebound. Again, offensive rebounding has really what has kept Canada in the game, in all of their games in this tournament. No good. Carlton with a rebound. Fields. Tom was picked off. Oh, Japan now with an opportunity to run. And run they do, but what a great job by Shay Colley. I thought she got a lot of ball. She thinks she got a lot of ball. She's saying all ball. Oh. Yeah, no, no, I think you're right though, because the only reason she came down on the arm after is that she hit, hit so much ball oh. that she just carried on through. The ball had already gone. And she did do a great job getting back. On that. That's a hustle play there, though. Unfortunately, she's going to have to go to the bench, which I don't think is a great sign for Canada. No, she's been very good. Um, Sammy Hill, though, I, you know, I like the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. And I like what she has done every every game that she has played for Canada. But the, 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 the pass that led to it was just like, you've just got to have that quality and be precise because Natalia Choma gives you a great target to hit. Bill's yeah. just was sloppy on the pass. Choma couldn't gather it in, foul the other way. She's just got to be so, so precise in what you do. Carlton gives it back up to a Choma. Choma cut baseline by Amy here. I think she wanted a foul. And so did the fans. Almost a turnover by Canada, but it's going to stay Canada ball the second se seven seconds. You don't have to say that the crowd thinks of the lack of a call. They get it in easily. Uh, miscommunication. I like the look. I think she would have been open. Oh, yeah, she was open again. Good read. The pass yeah. was there, just the execution of the pass. Two turnovers on the right read, just the wrong execution. Yeah. Takada puts the ball on the floor. No good. Get it up to Yamamoto. Yamamoto, nice game she has had today. They get it back to her. That wow. was well, well contested. And a foul on the three-point shot is going to put Japan to the three-point line, free-throw line, excuse me, and the fans, I can't hear myself because the fans do not like that call. That is going to be Japan's 17th, 18th, and 19th free-throw opportunities. They're 15 of 16 right now. That's a Chalmers fourth foul. Um, and it's a Chalmers yeah. fourth. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it again because, I mean, I said foul when, they, when she blew the whistle, but reflection we're not I don't, I'm surprised we haven't seen it because it's a trouble for foul there seems to be a fair amount of space between the Chalmers closeout and Yamamoto stepping back she's pure as a shooter Yamamoto I mean it's automatic the rhythm's the same brings her tally up to 18 as Japan now with a five-point lead. Last time they were up five, Canada came back really quickly and tied the game as they're having trouble getting the ball in now. And Hill says, I want you to just clear out because I don't want any other defenders to come and pick me up. And Canada having trouble just getting an entry pass into their offense. So a foul's going to be called, off-ball foul, holding. But that high post pass is still there. It's been there the whole game. They've, they've stopped making it as often as they have. And they're struggling to get the ball below the foul line extended so they can. it's harder to go inside. Throw it into the high post. Get the defense to move off it. And struggle to chase. Takata comes out and 
Evelyn Mawuni comes back in. Carlton's got it. Uh, that's a shot I would give to Carlton. Yep. And think that she was going to make it 80% of the time. Yamamoto finds the mismatch. Evelyn, spin move, nice hounds by Fields. They get it back to Yamamoto. A lot of time on the clock. Oh, wow. Well, she had a decent look. And it helps I came over, maybe affected her layup a little bit. So Canada now. Fields, her jump shot goes in. It's a great shot, I just don't think it's the right option. You know, she made a tough one. Not, not sure that this decision. Yoshida doesn't look to shoot too much. And maybe wanted to get a quick shot up yeah. so they would get the ball back. Yeah. That's like the only yeah. reason. So they will have the ball back. Canada, no surprise. They're going to want to try and use as much clock as they can and get a good look. Well, she's just made one. That one's no good. But Alexander with the offensive rebound. Yeah, I actually thought she traveled as well. I did see the travel. She hopped. After the rebound, uh, hopefully we get a replay. After the rebound, you can see she didn't dribble and she two foot hops. Well, we're not going to get a replay, I don't think, but it, I saw it and I think it was a really good call by the referee on the baseline. Oh, Yamamoto left wide open, reverse layup. She cannot convert. And that is going to end the half. Well, Canada, we're trailing by four. Sorry, end the quarter. Canada, we're trailing by four at half. 50 to 46. They are now trailing by three. We have 10 minutes left to play. 67 for Canada, 70 for Japan. Well, the numbers are going to be still impressive. 59 and 51 for both of these, guys, these teams are on the two-point line. Still surprised with a number of with the 35% uh, is getting there. They've got up to 17 three-point attempts now. Japan, much more their, their normal style. And I, still would, I still think, as was shown in the last couple of plays, that if they do challenge the shot going to the ring, they get, they're, they're tough mates, and it just forces people to change it. So that's the impressive thing in terms of how Canada have changed that up slightly. But the thing that worries me is that they, they, they go too much dribble. It's not good for them. Everything is congested. Okay, if they take the shot and they get the rebound, that's been a tactic for them. And they got a lot of reward out of that across this tournament. But Yamamoto, in particular, <laughs> has just been exceptional for Japan. And they're the team. The reason they got into foul trouble was the fact that Japan were really aggressive. But they got balanced because they really did create some long closeouts, did get some buckets in transition. So with a three-point game, place the Paris on the line. Home crowd really desperate for Canada to get the win. This has got the makings of another great one. We've had so many tight games here. This format works, it really does work. And we've got a great fourth quarter to look forward to. Well, we are 10 game minutes away from seeing which team will be celebrating, Canada or Japan. We called it before the game. We said this was going to be a very, very exciting game. Win or lose, they, the, the losing team will still have an opportunity and a chance to qualify. But unfortunately, their fate will be in the hands of another country and another team. As we have Hungary and Spain coming up next. All the fans here in the gym, they want Canada to win because they know win or lose, Hungary could move on. I mean, that's the great the great part. That's the additional part of the theater of this, isn't it? The home crowd want Canada to win because they would then quali Hungary would qualify regardless of outcome. Uh, Emmy here and Sammy Hill in the game for Canada in place of Kali and Atramwa because they have two fouls. And mix up there defensively as Miyazaki, she had a quiet third yeah. quarter, but all 12, sorry, 10 of her points in the first half came from layups. The other two points were actually just free throws, I believe it was. 
Canada having trouble again getting it into a, even a pass to the next player because of this denying defense. I'm not sure Fields is aware of the clock. And just too much time taken off the court, uh, clock. And a 24 second violation goes against Canada. For those, for the guys at home watching this and remembering how Hungary dealt with that, they just made a pass sooner. They didn't get caught. Remember it was a release pass? They were almost passing from yeah, the other exactly. side and going right into their offense from that. Hatar was out. And he, yeah, yeah, just always available at the high post, even if they had to literally extend away from the three-point line. It meant the ball moved. Miyazaki shaking bait, finds Akaho. And her shot's no good. Hill with the rebound. Same problem again. The early pass hasn't been made, and we're down to 12 on the possession. Fields again. That time draws the foul on Takada, and that is going to be her fourth. I believe it was on her. And it was a foul. She, she lowered her hand. Yep. yep. So. Still not sure about the option. You know, she got bowed out with the foul to an extent. And again, Amir here and uh, Alexander aren't touching the basketball. Enough and in places that are going to hurt Japan. They can't just hope that they're going to get offensive rebounds. There has to be a little bit more to it. into that lead. It's a three-point lead for Japan. Miyazaki turns the corner, gets it up to Yamamoto. Yamamoto to... Yeah. I think it was an inadvertent foul by Fields, yeah. but nice read by Mawuli. Well, the defense played to stop the handoff, didn't yeah. they? And, and there she, she recognized that drive lane. And that's, a, that's the beauty of watching Japan. Yeah. They recognize things, and it's not just one player, it's all of them combined, Absolutely. recognizing if there's an overpressure, what do you do, backdoor. Miyazaki splits defense. Evelyn Mawuli with all the time in the world as she knocks down another three-point basket. I believe that's her third of the game. Fourth, sorry. Big, big game for her. She had a great first half, 19 points. Fields now, her shot goes in and out. And Japan, they want to push the tempo. They always should want to push the tempo. Mawuli, back to Miyazaki. Miyazaki to the corner. They go into, oh, and that's going to be Shea Colley's fifth personal foul. So she is going to have to go to the bench for the rest of this game. Coach Lepena had pulled a timeout before that foul. Six-point lead. Sammy Hill coming in. But he's cancelled the timeout he pulled. Well, he's used one timeout. So has Japan. So they have two timeouts left. Both coaches. Yoshida gets it. Draws the switch. Goes in fire inside to the mismatch. Akaho with a little step back. No good. Mawuli there. And a quick... Three-point shot is back iron. I think that was Hiroshita. No, sorry, Hayashi who, who, who put the shot up. She's had a quiet day, game. And Sammy Hill was trying to find Alexander, couldn't. But gets the ball back, five seconds on the shot clock, and a foul is gonna go against Akaho. So Canada will get the ball with a new shot clock and a little bit of time to breathe. It's, it's a big question now for Coach Japan. When does he bring back Natalie Achamba? Because he's not getting anything at the moment out of Amma here. He's going to take the time out now okay. when he's on the sideline. When, when do you bring Achamba back? Amma is not touching the ball. She's not a factor. You know Achamba 
with her she's bigger demand, personality, yeah. she's going to get more <laughs> her bigger personality. Yeah. Her leadership, I mean, Absolutely. it's Natalia Chomwa. She wants the ball, you give her the ball. Well, she's going to make a great decision with it as well. Uh, so. Yeah, if it's a pass, if it's for her, she she knows what she needs to do, and she is the most experienced if Canada... Looks like she's going in, she's yep. on the scene, so... If Canada qualified for Paris 2024, it will be her fourth consecutive Olympics. So talk about experience at the highest of levels and for such a long time. Natalia Chomwa and Canada basketball, those two names go hand in hand. Yeah. 16 rebound advantage for Canada. You know, that's, we said that it would be a factor that kept them in the game, and it has, especially as the game has developed. But the other side of that is Japan's percentages means there aren't many rebounds for them. You know, they have yeah. the... Yeah, Canada, 14 offensive rebounds, but they're only shooting, you know, 30% from three. They've really struggled from three in this yeah. tournament. Whereas Japan, they're at 37%, 7 of 19, 56% from two-point range compared to 51%. Japan with the five they have on the floor at the moment with the Maloui sisters. Plus the, 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 probably their premier three off three perimeter players. They're going, they really are going at it. At this period of the game is big for them. They're trying to break it open right now. Well, you saw that quickly. Kayla Alexander with the double double. Carlton. Oh, she gets the air one. And Canada and Carlton with a big basket and an opportunity to make it a three-point play. That's trademark Carlton, it's trademark, yes. isn't it? That Especially up. going to her left. Yeah. But in this game, she looks a little bit more set. She's got a little bit more time, and she's just knocking down shots on that move. Nice job by Carlton, as she is having a standout game. 19 points so far in this game for her. And a foul is gonna go against Hill. We've seen Canada get into foul troubles early, and that's put Japan on the free throw line in, the, in, in a couple quarters in this yeah. game. Well, both teams have the three fouls. One more, and the, the opponent will go to the free throw line. Not really sure what was called and why. Miyazaki trying to find the mismatch. Now gets it up to oh. Mawuli, crossover. Goes at Alexander, she wanted the foul, but it wasn't called. Fields now pushing the tempo, she has a Chonwa. And a passing foul is gonna be called. I don't think either of them was a foul, to be quite honest. Miyazaki. I don't think that's a foul. No. Well, it doesn't matter, a ball in, a chonwa has got it. Alexander falls. They get it. No, they don't get it. It's on one now. The defense. Hill drives baseline. Oh, tough basket by Sammy Hill for Canada. And it is a one point game with 6.20 left to play here in Hungary. The winner of this game will be celebrating with a ticket to Paris 2024. They find the mismatch. Achoma can't foul. She got four fouls. You saw she was there ready to help side. She recognized she it, really recognized quickly. it yeah, yeah. but she couldn't really do much more than she did do. So three-point lead, Canada with an opportunity to tie it at least. They go inside to the Capitan. She finds Hill. Hill, feet are set, touches the rim. Oh, I think it touched the rim. It touched the rim, absolutely it touched the rim. Unless he's, if he's going to say she was... Yeah, he says, yeah. His mistake. I don't yeah. think that's, that's great officiating. Yes. He didn't see the ring. Achon uh, was also slow to go to get the offensive mm. rebound, so, uh, you know, I think maybe that... But I, I like that. He says, yeah, no, you're right. It did touch the rim. I blew my whistle incorrectly. So Canada ball. They find Alexander. She's blocked by Mawali. Yoshida, there's a fight for the rebound. And Mawali comes up with it. There's a five on four for Japan. Yoshida gets it back. 
And they go inside. Oh. Solid, solid basketball. Steps in, gets here on her back. Even though the pass was a bit scrappy. 21 points for Evelyn Mawuli. Oh. Alexander. Take, oh, and that's going to be an M1. And Mawuli there, I think she just lowered her arms. It is. Let's take a look here. Yeah, yeah that's a good call. Yeah. Wasn't straight. Yeah, yeah. Fouled her twice. Um, wasn't a big foul or a hard no, no. foul, that, but it's still a foul. So, Evelyn Mawuli, sorry, that's going to be her. Uh, it wasn't called on her. It's Alexandra and the Choma just have to get touches. Unless there's something in transition, unless they have the same type of penetration that Neil made. You've got to milk it, and then late in the clock, you've got options for Park, you've got options for Hill, you've got options for Fields to put it on the floor. Try to get those money in the bank put passes into a Chum Warren Alexander. Just go to work inside. Oh, that foul was actually called on Yamamoto. Wow. Reaching in, I guess. Akaho now. Doesn't matter, it's a two point game for Japan. You see the veterans checking in. Akaho, no good. A trauma with the rebound, chance to tie or take the lead. Fields goes to the basket and it's time! Four minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Naira Fields with the big basket. Yoshida is well defended by Sammy Hill. Sammy Hill gets it to Takada. Up to Yamamoto, speak quiet this quarter. Yamamoto. Penetration, no good, a John went out. Here's a rebound. And miscommunication. So ball back to Japan. They were trying to fight Carlton with the mismatch underneath. Not sure. Yes, yeah, she has a height advantage, maybe a mismatch, but the, how quick Japan is. Yeah, and there was a lot of traffic. There was a lot of red jerseys around that pass. Maybe get caught now there, put Alexander back inside. Would have been a preferred option. 12 turnovers for Canada in a tied up game against four for Japan is, uh, is big. But then they, they balance that out with their work on the offensive glass. Yeah, they, get, they give themselves yeah. opportunities to score again, the ball back. Well, we could not have asked for a better game, a closer game, for 36 minutes here in Hungary. Just don't like Japan as a half-court team at all. Shot clock, Yamamoto drives, a Chongwe there with another defensive rebound. In Canada now, they want to use a little bit of the clock. They might also be getting a little tired. I like what they've done defensively, though, yeah. oh, because yeah. they're making Japan slow down. And gets it to Carlton. Carlton has a little bit of room. No good. Alexander almost with the rebound. Uh, this is where Japan needs to run. Yes. And that is what they need to do. Miyazaki with a big layup as the youngin Silas Swartz is gonna take a lot away from this tournament, win wow. or lose. Wow. 18 year old, we're gonna be saying her name a lot. Moving on here, Sammy Hill. Chawa, she's got the mismatch. Alexander back to Swartz. Swartz, 18 year old. Chawa's gotta go up with it. She does. And it's gonna be a shot clock violation. It didn't hit the rim, so another turnover for Canada. Same thing that we've been talking about, and you make the point. Get the ball through the air to make them get better angles. Don't, Hill's done a good job of looking after it. Takes so long out the clock. By the time it gets to the front line, Japan are then scrambling, and there's no real opportunity. Three turnovers in this fourth quarter. Zero turnovers for Japan. Edgem in the game, Achoma's gonna sit. Surely that's an in and out. 
Surely. two minutes, 36 seconds. She's she's had the last four defensive rebounds for nice. Canada, I believe it was. Big call, especially with Edgerman not going with uh, Amy here. But, but she so. does have fouls, so is it just to take her out one defensive possession? I would, I would, I would assume so. Canada only has three team fouls. Japan earned the bonus. Takada gets it and just goes straight up against Naira Field. So a nice high-low look as well. Coach LaPena is going to call a timeout. And that is... He's now got to go back with a charm, but he's got to trust her. Well, woo, with the game, the way this game has been going, two minutes and 19 seconds is a long time. We said it was gonna, I said it was gonna be a 40 minute game. You said it could possibly be a 45 minute game. Absolutely, it could be a 45 minute game. Who, who will a 45 minute game benefit? I think that actually oh, might benefit got, Japan. It's got to benefit Japan with a number. But then again, we say they've got great depth. But Yamamoto and Miyazaki have played a lot of minutes. And uh, so has uh, well, Hayashi's played a lot. She's yeah. just been quiet, but she's been on the she's been on the court a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Abu Malawi's, Malawi's been on the bench a lot, but uh, on the floor a lot. But uh, yeah, it's got a longer game has got to, has got to favour the team in red. Still no, they've left the shovel out. As they go inside to Emmy here, she gets it back out to Hill. Hill penetrates and a foul is called. So she's gonna go to the free throw line. So a good job there by Sammy Hill drawing the contact. Best way to get back in a game is also to stop the clock and go to the free throw line. Tough decision, smart decision. Again, falls below the foul line, they've moved it early, they get it back and there's a scene to attack. Here comes Evelyn, though. Well, Evelyn Mawuli, big, big game for her, 22 points. She had a great first half. A little bit of apprehension now in the gym with the crowd who see the, you know, the three-point game. They would love this Canadian team to get the win. Both teams shooting the free throws well. If it does come down to free throw shooting, and Hayashi's shot is off again. The fans wanted a foul on that rebound, but they don't call it. Hayashi has been off tonight. Yeah. Leading score at game one for them. It looked great. They go inside to Emmy here. Emmy here is going to be called for a travel. Yeah. Yeah, it's a travel. Uh, I think in the United States or Canada, that wouldn't be called. But she picks up her, she easily picks up her right foot, her pivot foot. But she's learned that move yeah. playing in the U.S. Unfortunately, it is a travel, though. Well, Chum was back, Cuba. so I know I'm going to, she'll probably pick up a foul first possession. It's like, what, is, what do I know? But a trauma? No way. She's no. way too intelligent. Unless she has to. Yeah, yeah, totally. See, right, that right there, you know, she, there was a switch. She said switch back. Now we have Sammy Hill, Miyazaki. Go Good up. defense, keep moving your feet. Mawuli, she's got to put it up soon, she does. And that's why you have Natalia Choma yep. on the floor. Yep. Well, they got to push it. There's no reason to slow it down now. And another turnover in travel goes against Canada. And a little bit of frustration. Lots of time left. It's a one possession game, yeah. three point game, minute four. Plenty of time.
a tired looking set on the perimeter though for Canada. No one got available for a Chomwa. I know she, you know, she calls the turnover herself with a double dribble, but she had a lot of standing still players. Japan now, they want to use a little bit of the clock because they know that they are up. Miyazaki. Oh, crossover. Baseline penetration. Almost turns it over. Yamamoto gets it up and it's in. That's a five-point lead. There's 39 seconds. Almost a turnover for Japan, but Yamamoto in the right spot at the right time. Fields come down, her three-point shot no good. And Kayla Alexander there to clean up the miss. And that is gonna count. She's gonna go to the free throw line. They're almost better off trying to take sack early. Not as not what Fields just did, but throw it up and get the offensive rebound. And then Alexander's done what she has done. Taking the Chomwa out again. But just the, the job she did defensively on the last possession where almost generated the turnover was just phenomenal. Her intelligence, the way she moved people out the keyway. Just to make it a two-point game. Well, unfortunately, can't convert. And a foul is going to be called against Canada. It's only, they're not going to put Japan on the no. free throw line, so. You know, you got an offensive rebound. I don't I don't mind that foul. It wasn't intentional. It was two players going after the ball, unfortunately, just bounced the wrong way. So um, Kayla Alexander, and I don't know if this is tired, nerves, as Japan, I believe it is, called a timeout. A rare miss from her at the free throw line. She's had three triples. Every game she's played in this tournament, she's had a double-double. That's the kind of performance she has put in. And she is getting those double-doubles with offensive rebounds and putbacks. She doesn't have sets run for her. They don't give her the ball out of a certain situation or a set. So in Canada, win or lose, in my opinion, Kayla has to be up, especially if they qualify for talks about MVP of this tournament. If they, if they qualify, she's the MVP unless someone goes off in the last game for either Hungary or Spain. But it's, um, when they walk it down Canada and don't move it, it just don't look as effective. Take it early because it's an easier offensive opportunity for Alexander if it's a broken play and she's got the opportunity to go to the glass. But they had to come up with that. Yamamoto could have punched the ticket for Japan with that. Scramble, just outworked everybody on the on the replay, off the clock. If we're talking about candidates for MVP, Yamamoto's up there as well. She's got a marvelous, marvelous moment. She has 26 points in this game. She has 15 of 15. Yeah, she, yeah, she would be, you, you know, you could talk about Evelyn Mawuli, but Yamamoto has done it consistently yeah. every game of this tournament. Well, Japan, they're gonna take the ball out here because they want the entire 24-second shot clock. Yeah. They get it back to Miyazaki. Miyazaki, you want to use as much time as you can if you are Japan. And Canada finally fouls. And they're gonna put Yamamoto to the free throw line. Uh, she's Probably their best free throw shooter. Well, she's 100% here today, but they're shooting 18 and 19. Well, she, across the Japanese league this year, she's like eight, uh, nearly 89%. That's um, that's across the season is uh, is very great. good. Yeah. Bianco yeah. comes back in a little bit more rebounding capacity for Japan, but one of these is going to make life very, very difficult for Canada. Not impossible because it's, you know. Only going to be a, it's going to be a two possession game regardless. Well, Japan actually are going big. Yeah, oh yeah, the Kaho Kaho, yeah. and the two uh, Mauli sisters. Yeah, best rebound in the lineup they can put on the yeah. floor. Oh, a rare miss by Yamamoto. Canada, they got to go. You got to take a quick shot, no matter what it is. Oh, Sammy Hill not able to convert, but it might stay. And I think yeah, the coach from, it, yeah, it. The, the Japanese coach wants to challenge it. Canada, no more timeouts. Japan has one timeout left. And they are going to do a video challenge. Yep. Coaching challenge request. Video challenge. 
coach has nothing to lose here on the challenge. His bench told him to take it as a challenge. Up a play. Yeah. Catch, shoot, the foul, or catch, shoot, the steal is there. The, while there's that opportunity, it's still alive. Well, not a lot of room. They get it into Alexander. Back to Koenig. Koenig, she's a good three point shooter. Feet set, back iron. No good. And the rebound goes to Japan. Well, what a game. As you see the celebration, and rightly so, because they have just put their ticket to Paris 2024 with a win over Canada. Canada falling 82 to 86 to Japan here at the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament in Hungary. Wow, we said it was going to be tight. We said it was going to be tense. And look at the relief, the, the absolute jubilation. Canada had a shot, had a chance. With Yamamoto with that scramble layup, probably you know, just sealed it. And Yamamoto's just been exceptional. Tears in the crowd. Numbers-wise, who cares really? 86, 82 are the only two numbers you need to worry about. Yeah. But 55%, 35%, pretty balanced, 90% from the free throw line. 15 turnovers for Canada, but as we said, they balanced that out by doing a great job on the glass. If you'd have asked us game day one, who was going to get there, we'd have said Japan after their big win, but they really had to play against some pressure here. Carlton was excellent, Fields and Alexander, Alexander has had a tournament that she will look back on. Uh, with so much pride, but also so much disappointment, unless they get that third spot. Well, we, we'll talk about that when we get to the next game, but they've still got a shot, depending on who wins the next game. They do still have a shot. Unfortunately, they're going to have to wait and see what happens in the Spain-Hungary game. As you see, Aluli celebrating with her coach. What a performance she had today, especially in the first half. And you see them celebrating with their hats and their lollipops and the all-important tickets to Paris 2024 as they, the silver medalists from the Tokyo Olympics, will be back playing at the highest level. And the Canada is a great team. But Japan in the Olympic Games really enhances the Olympic Games. It's a different style, a different way, an exciting way to play. And they've got some players that just excite the crowd and everybody can relate to. So it's, uh, it's great, they get the shot, there you go, qualify. Just that one word just means so much for Japan. And you would not want to wait around for that next game to see who else would qualify, but Japan taking advantage as they are celebrating and thanking the fans who were actually, most of them were probably cheering against them.
But they do have quite a bit of uh, Japanese contingency out here cheering yep. them on as well. So they're thanking all of those who traveled, supported them, and helped them qualify because it's not just the 12 players or the coaching staff. A lot of other people who are involved in helping teams and players qualify to events like the Olympics. So all smiles, a little bit of nerves at certain times. They look very serious in warm-up. Yeah, they do. <laughs> You know, we, we sat here and warm up. They were feeling it. Oh, they've delivered up the pressure. And those smiles are going to be all over the Paris basketball tournament. Takada with a rare smile. She's <laughs> not one who really smiles often, but she is absolutely smiling and celebrating with her teammates. Yamamoto, for me, was absolutely oh. exceptional all tournament long as she finishes today with 21 points. And I talked about Evelyn Mawuli. She had 21 also. Let's not forget Miyazaki, who just, I think all of her baskets actually came inside the paint and around the basket. And Canada just had a hard time stopping her penetration. And let's not forget, Kayla Alexander still has to be up for talks about MVP of this tournament. Three triple doubles in three games. Wow. In, in a, against the team she, she's played against, all different, all with quality she is consistently. And it's not just about rebounding where you got. Her team was struggling and she went to work on the glass. She kept Canada in every single game. I do think her relationship and partnership with Achoma was crucial. And, you, and there is a question as to why Achoma sat down for those last in and out possessions. You can see the logic, but big games, big moments, experience and everything else. But my worry when you get in the picture there has just been phenomenal. Carl came to play today. Huge game for Bridget Carl. Trademark off the pull-up, which and it's it's one of those games where you go, hey, neither team deserved to lose, but it was always going to come down to one or two plays, and it wasn't it wasn't great threes, whatever. Yamamoto with that scramble to get the layup when Canada had the turnover almost it was absolutely crucial. Well, this game we had 13 lead changes. It was tied 17 times. It was really a game back and forth. Japan always sort of had the edge a little bit. You felt like Canada always had to come back and tie it or take a one, two point lead. And it really, you couldn't ask for a better game and more important game and a more quality game that we had here today. Japan booking their tickets to Paris 2024. Canada now, they will have to wait to see what happens in the Spain and Hungary game. And really, I think for Canada, you know, talk not having Shea Pauly on the floor at the end, but they didn't shoot the ball well all tournament. No. It was a little ball bit ball. better from 2% this game, but 3%, they only made three, they didn't shoot a lot of threes, but still, you know, shooting in the 20s from three-point range, it's tough to win again. Yeah, and we talked about it a lot. There, there was the ball movement that didn't create any advances for them on the perimeter. They worked it to the inside, but Bridget Carlton had to make all her own shots. And they didn't really have anyone coming in. It just came off, off screens and shot the basketball. There's some great shots. Well, Japan's still celebrating. And they have every right to continue to celebrate. And all smiles now as they know. There you see Evelyn Mawuli and the big game that she had. Canada, they're going to have to wait to see what happens. Hungry or Spain are coming up next as Japan are going to the Olympics again. Thanks for tuning in from Mark and Shona. We'll be back for the game coming up shortly.
throughout. What made the difference in this game? I mean, Japan's a really good team. We had a tough group. Uh, I lost two good, tough games to two really good teams, so we fought hard. Uh, we scored a lot of points, but I mean, Japan's really good. They're hard to guard. Um, they're quick. They shoot threes really well. I thought our game plan was good. It just we weren't able to get it done. I mean, four points. Uh, we had multiple double scores. Just couldn't get it done. One question before the game was, what tempo will this game?